You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bud, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. This is Freiberger with Death Cave and Satanic Royalty Records, and you are listening to Boz Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Boz Mayhem Radio Network and staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Boz Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to have Friedberger of Death Cave and Satanic Royalty Records, Death Cave, have released their debut album entitled Smoking Mountain in 2020, and it's out right now. Friedberger has launched Satanic Royalty Records and Clothing Line, so we're going to be talking about all this. Also, check out the cover of Supple Terra's Refuse Resist, which is a couch cover protest video for George Floyd. And I got to say, man, you guys knocked it out of the ballpark on Refuse Resist cover of Supple Terra's, <laughs> man. So good, hey, good, good cover, thank you, man. Thank uh, I, uh, over the years, you know, Supple Terra has always been an incredibly important band to me since, you know, I got a rise as a little kid. And uh, so I, in a band, like four bands ago, I used to do a, a cover of Territory oh. in the band. And uh, uh, later on, uh, actually, uh, last year or the end of 2019, I did a, an entire Arise cover set with a bunch of friends here in town, one of which was Elijah one month before he died from Black Breath. Oh, man. Uh, so it was... Uh, I'm really happy we just got to spend a lot of time together jamming out before he uh, passed on to the other side, you know? Yeah, thank you very much, because I, I love Sepultura so much. They're an extremely important band to me, so it, it was uh, it was fun to put that together, and uh, I'm, I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, a, a great cover, and, um, I mean, there's a lot of great covers of it, but, I mean, this this is, there's no smoking guns to it. I mean, it's legit good. It's not no... We added our own twist, which that's cool, but you stayed to the simple purity of the song, which I like that a lot. Totally. And uh, I was even wearing like a Godflesh shirt, you know, just like Max, man. I was trying to like channel the inner <laughs> essence, you know? <laughs> so how have you been doing and how excited are you to hopefully get back out on the road soon to tour and play some shows? Because I know some things are opening up just a little bit here. Totally. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're doing what a lot of people are doing and kind of just sitting back for a little bit. You know, we're, we're all fully vexed now. So it's just a matter of, uh, waiting for things to cool down. You know, we're shooting for hopefully like August, you know, ish, uh, time for, you know, shows to really be coming back and feeling kind of safe about them, you know, not feeling like some shit's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, that, that's about the time, you know, it's like, I, since quarantine had happened, you know, I've kind of shifted the gears on a lot of things. But uh, uh, since we started practicing again, we've we've been hitting it really hard. We we just finished out our our EP, writing our EP. Just need to you know polish the edges and get everything rolling on that. But uh, but yeah, it's I, I, it feels great to be playing music with my brothers again and just being able to. Uh, you know, it's like after that period, you know, we weren't that creative or whatever during the. The, the great depression of our time uh it, it you know after that you know it was it was mainly just about trying to like stay healthy mentally i guess like doing what you, you need to do to get through it you know and for me it was like the couch covers have been great you know i've, I've had fun with that but like when it came to like writing the song you know i would pick up a guitar and just sit, sit there for a while and just be like well, I haven't going to play video games now or whatever else to distract myself for a little bit, you know? So speaking of the EP that you guys, just finishing up some few touches on it, did you guys do anything else differently uh, during this pandemic other than working on music, you know, like collecting or uh, catching up on anything, or did you just hammer out all these songs for this upcoming EP? 
No, we actually didn't practice for a long time because uh, – our our old jam space we we had moved into a 24-hour space since but we were in a, a residential area in a house where we decided not to keep practicing out of respect for everyone in lockdown because we are an extremely loud band and you know no matter how soundproof a garage can be it was still loud you know and, and so it was just like one of those things that you know when it first kind of like reopened before the second lockdown we had gotten together and it was you know, amazing. We kind of were able to just practice again and film the uh, the live stream video we did for the album. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we hadn't done anything <laughs> until like recently when we, we, we started playing again. And then we were able to pretty much hammer out, you know, just over 20 minutes worth of music to put it on an EP. I don't mean this in a bad way to anybody during this pandemic, but did this kind of be like a blessing in disguise for some bands to actually get the juices flowing again to maybe take a step back and be like, I need that break. You know, I just needed to re rejuvenate myself possibly. Totally. I mean, I, I feel like tons of people use this time to, you know, do a lot of things like, uh, you know, like on their to do list that if you had more time, you know, like gardening or working out more, or, you know, just taking care of, you know, yourself, you know, like, I feel like I saw a lot of that, you know, mm -hmm. including with myself. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely think this rekindled and refired a lot of like passions and love, you know. And despite if you weren't able to do like some bands and just like write like two or three albums during this time, you know, like and just took that time to, like you said, like self reflect and take a break and then come back, you know, like recharge. Kind of like when some people are like, I'm quitting music forever, you know, after, you know, being a touring musician for 20 years or something. And then like a year later, they're like, fuck, that sucks. I'm going to play music again. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, you can't you can't really tell those people like, uh, you know, no, don't do it or you'll be back, you know, and say, you know, like, good luck, you know, like, have fun. Yeah. And, and yeah. your mind think like, well, I'll see you when you get back. But like. We'll and keep the chair warm for you. Because <laughs> nobody knew exactly what was going to happen or what was coming down the pop. I mean, we didn't know from the next week to the next, you know? It, totally. I mean, that's the entire reason I uh, I was able to start the record label, which we'll talk about later. It's like uh, my, my, my life is incredibly busy. I manage a busy bar that's, you know, kind of seconds as a venue as well in Seattle. And uh, the band is always busy doing stuff. And I mean, just... It just managing the, those two things in life was just like all of my time. You know what I mean? So it just wasn't like, and I, it was kind of like a back of the mind idea until it, I had the time to, I guess, bring it to fruition. Now, Smoking Mountain is Death Cave's debut album. How does it feel to have this debut album out under your belt? And I know you're working on the EP, but specifically just the debut album. How does it feel to have that in your category now? Uh, I mean, it's amazing. It was kind of bittersweet just because of the fact that, you know, we had a, a full U.S. tour booked and everything around the album coming out. But then, of course, COVID happened. So, but we didn't want to hold on to it. We, we you know, we we did everything we can to get the word out. You know, we spent lots of time <laughs> promoting it, reaching out to anyone we could, trying to get it out there. And I feel like we did a pretty good job about spreading the word. Uh, about the album and I'm, I'm 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 i am really happy we ended up releasing it instead of like <laughs> hoping that shit was going to come back so, you know sooner than later and you know it's, I, I knew a few bands that done that and they're still sitting on the album so it's just like I, i'm just happy we did it and now we can kind of move forward you know and i think the album's great and i'm happy about everything you know with it you know with a label coming out to uh They'll be doing PR. They'll be doing distribution on a global basis. So I'll be able to get those records to some more places too, which will be exciting. Well, think about it this way, man. You've got this debut album that you guys have been uh, set on since 2020, or maybe a little bit further than that. And now you've got this EP getting come out in the fall. So it kind of all blends in together for you all to have more stuff when you go out on the road. Totally. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm, again, I'm not disappointed. We were able to sell a lot more records than I was even hoping you know I kind of set like a, a I won't be disappointed <laughs> if it's past this and we I definitely sold a lot more than that so it was uh, a good feeling to know that 
it, it went well. And then that, that like you were saying, uh, it'll also be a, a good album to have with us when we do, when we are able to tour, you know, and definitely hoping to uh, at least have something booked by <laughs> fall, you know what I mean? I, I'm still weary on doing a, a booked tour right now. <laughs> I'm starting to book, but uh, come fall, I'll bet when things are a little bit more uh you know, and and the no, you know, and there's a little bit more of a guideline on how things are going. Uh, you can definitely expect to see us on the road. You know, I, I don't know if we will be able to do the full U.S., but we're definitely going to at least hit, you know, west to Midwest, the uh, bare minimum. But uh, it would be really nice to be able to hit all the coasts, hit it hard, play hard, destroy. You know. <laughs> All right, Fried Burger, let me ask you this, man. As a band, were you guys a little nervous releasing that debut album since bands couldn't tour, or did you just need to get something out there to say, hey, we're here and we are irrelevant? Um, well, we had been hyping it so much, man. It was just like, you know, a lot of people were following the, the production of the album and everything, so it was just like, it felt like there was so much momentum behind it. It would just fucking fall short if, it didn't like come out, you know, it's like, even though we couldn't tour it and stuff, like I was saying, it, uh, it still felt like the right thing to do. And again, I, I am happy we decided to end up releasing it then because, you know, who could have predicted that, you know, we're still figuring things out, you know, a year and a half later. What impressed you the most about making the debut album, Smoking Mountain, man? What, what stands out the most for you about that album? Well, for us, the recording process, the writing process, everything was a little bit different than I've done in you know, my 10 year of writing and playing music. And uh, we took time off to write, which is something I'd never done <laughs> in the past. You know, I was always playing shows and having tours on the calendar and like doing all this stuff constantly and then writing, you know, when you got, you got a little bit of an extra break, you know, and uh, instead we just didn't take any shows for three months and just sat there and worked really really hard on writing these albums you know we had like one song written uh prior to our little break uh that we had just been toying on and then uh we just sat there and hammered it out and it was really really a uh it was kind of a, a really fun process to writing uh which you know luckily enough we were able to do again for the cp uh but uh yeah, the writing process and then recording as well, because we recorded at the uh, Unknown, which is in Anacortes, Washington, which is kind of like just a little small town on the peninsula. You know, it's like, uh, you know, the town closes at nine. You know, the last the last bar closes at 11. Uh, it's a very sleepy town, but it's uh, a really big room, so you're able to get really big, uh, like, drum sounds, drum tones, and, you know, just... Yeah, cool, cool room mic, mic stuff you could do just for like you know background mic stuff for weirdos who like to mic everything, uh, like me. Um, but uh, <laughs> so is this church? You know, is an old old church there, which is now a recording studio that's also supposedly haunted. And you know, so as a band, you know, we 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 stayed in this church. We were recording and we spent the night there. You know, like we brought our inflatable mattresses and. You know, we had a lot of some music and a pull down screen to put on some like Netflix or whatever if we wanted to. But it was a, a really cool experience to just go to kind of like a sleepy town and really be immersed in recording an album. Because I've again only recorded, I used to have a studio in my house when I was younger, and then just recording at studios around town. You know, we're in Seattle, we're pretty blessed with some pretty legendary places and engineers locally. So, uh, it was just really cool to to go there and bring our own engineer with us, uh, Ben Brellen, who's also my boss and really good friend. Uh, and he also painted the album cover. <laughs> but uh, doing doing the whole like submerge yourself into the album thing was just it felt right, you know. And again, it was just like you know we were posting a lot and keeping you know everyone was pretty excited about the album coming out so it's just like we were just again like doing it all pretty fast and hammering it out and so we were just kind of keeping up with the progress of all of our social medias and stuff so 
just seemed again weird to way to release it but yeah just those two things in itself were very cool and again that haunted church is haunted (laughs) really you know i mean it's like (laughs) they say it's crazy and there's this like crying room that's haunted that's like boarded up you're not allowed to go in and like the pews are super crazy like feeling and like so I'll tell you what we experienced. Um, like, so other bands like Sumac and stuff, they were like, he was talking to his friend because he saw someone walk to the bathroom through the, the back. Mm. And he, he, he like, they didn't respond. So he went around to talk to him, but he was upstairs in the, the audio engineer room, uh, which is, you know, like 40 feet away to his staircase and up, up a huge flight of wooden stairs, you know? So it was like, no way the person could have been there. And, uh, but there was nobody there. And then, uh, what happened when we were there is, um, so all the doors are, are locked when we're in there, you know, it's just like one big front door and then a really squeaky door, uh, that you push through once you go through kind mm-hmm. of the entryway mm-hmm. and then there's a back door through another door. So there's like not really a way for a breeze to go through or, um, just anything to kind of like wander in or whatever on accident. And all of us plus our engineer were upstairs the very last day finishing some uh, mixing things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the door, which is really squeaky, slammed open so hard it hit the wall and then just went squeak, 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 squeak. And we looked down through the window and, you know, we didn't see anything. So I got really scared, so I just ran down there to try to be like, who is fucking her? You know what I mean? Just like, you know, that's what I do when I get scared. I charge head on and try to just defeat it, you know? Like, like I, 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 it's better than just, you know, laying around in fear or whatever. But uh, yeah. nothing was down there, you know what I mean? The doors were locked. I double-checked. Like, there's no breeze, anything. It was just like, I don't know, it scared the hell out of us. But uh, that was our, our scary adventure. A lot of other people have, I've had a weird experiences there. See, that's up my alley because I used to do paranormal investigating for a long time. I did it for like six or seven <laughs> years. I love it. Oh, perfect. You yeah. get the best of both worlds with this one. Then. There you go. There you go. I know people, some people are on the fence about believing, some don't believe in, and that's totally fine. That's, that's your choice. But I've just had experiences to where I know there's something out there beyond the realm. You know what I mean? I, I know. I. So. I'm totally there with you, man. I, uh, you know, I'm native and I definitely believe, uh, a lot of the old ways where they talk about speaking with your elders and your ancestors, sure. like through like vision quests and stuff. Like sure. I, uh, I think there's a lot of magics and, and then truths out there that, that are kind of like for guy and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can't be explained that happen. And, uh, and I think that has a lot to do with, I don't know, spirits or like, oh, I don't know, like shit that just can't be explained. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't like, uh, I know humans love to know every single detail of everything because they're afraid of things they don't know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but I choose to just believe that that's something we don't know and we, we can't prove, you know I mean? It's just like, I don't know. And it, I don't know. That's it. We could go on and on about spirits. <laughs> but uh it just seems like it's more yeah. and more apparent now than what it used to be you know than just the occasional oh i saw something you know what i mean it's like it's more irrelevant now more and more well I'm, so i don't more know more and more people on this earth any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on ep coming up I, I know these must change every time you listen i know these are your babies fried burger but i mean are they any that stick out for you possibly um, of course it's, I mean, and as you were saying about the EP and stuff, I always feel like, you know, the newer stuff we're working on is the best, you know what I mean? And that's like, what you know, we write pretty long songs and it's, uh, we don't try to force things out either. So it's like when we come up with riffs or, you know, we got a couple of minutes of the music and then it just isn't working, you know, we scrap it, you know, it's just like next, you know what I mean? It's just like. <laughs> Yeah, or we might use it for a different song another time, but it's just like uh, we're we're trying to write like the best music we can, and I feel like we keep growing as a band, and uh, so uh, yeah, I think the newer stuff we play is the best for that album. Uh, the, the track that uh, I mean, that album has a lot of important tracks for different reasons, but I think the road is my my favorite just because it's such a heavy hitting song. 
it's yeah it's just very impactful it hits hard it's got a very cool slow section to it I, it's kind of just captures the whole kind of Beth Cave essence which is you know tackling a lot of different emotions uh, you know like the happy the sad the party the fucking depression the, you know all of the feelings into one song so are there any tracks that didn't make Smoking Mountain that ended up on this new EP that you're working on possibly or any riffs or anything nope no 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 again we just kind of like scrap things out and move on uh, and then so the the new EP is just one really long cover and then another really long song. So it's just two songs. Uh, and this new song is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I went through, uh, a lot of changes recently. Like, so I got the record label launching and then, uh, me and my fiance, you know, put my partner of the last five plus years separated. And so I went to the woods with my friend and took, uh, five hits of LSD and a little over a half ounce of mushrooms. Wow. And uh, decided to, uh, you know, look inward and figure out all the stuff, shed egos, you know, like work past a lot of things. It's like I'm diving into this new adventure that's going to be the rest of my life, which is something I'm very passionate about. Mm. Um, and also having to move on from, you know, trying, you know, when you go from planning your whole life with someone to kind of like not, it's, very weird feeling and so uh just re hit reset and uh i uh kept saying uh, bir these birch trees are bones when i was looking at the birch trees uh, when they became uh fractal vision uh birch trees and uh i just kept repeating that so i ended up writing the song about that and kind of like taking that idea and going off of it uh for the lyrics behind the song. So I'm really excited about both the music and the lyrics in that song. Cause, uh, I, a lot of our songs are about kind of nature and you know, death and decay and stuff. But a lot of it is also an, uh, kind of an analogies of life and stuff. So it was just nice to get the album done, get through all this stuff, make it be back. You know, it feels like we're, getting there you know what i mean we're about to hit the roaring 20s you know after the great depression so uh get ready because the music scene will explode once that happens you mentioned you guys worked with ben verrill and how is working with him man does he get something out of you all that maybe somebody else might not get possibly i mean he so ben makes custom amplifiers uh he knows sound really well his band helms lee is very heavy awesome uh band and he records music. I mean, he's kind of like a jack of all trades of anything that has to do with heavy music. So uh, kind of wanting to bring him out of his recording retirement was uh, pretty awesome because he had quarantine kind of gotten back into uh, recording music. And, um, you know, just because idle hands, you know, <laughs> him and I are a lot the like in the fact that we can't sit still. So when, you know, quarantine happened, you know, you have to figure out projects, you know, stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. So um, he definitely, like, got back into all of that. And so it was like, all right, dude, like, it's time, you know, let's do this. Uh, because, again, just with his ability to know heavy sound, we, won't, we we figured it would be great, you know, take him to this big room where we're able to get Zeppelin-style drums and, you know, all that and be able to do some cool tricks with, having so much room with the amps and cabinets and the big room. So it was, you know, it seemed like kind of like a, just the right idea. You know, he is someone who's very close to all of us and is around. And so it's like something that, you know, we feel like he could transpose well into audio form. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard when you're playing a really, really heavy band to be able to record, you know, and you got a button, you know, so we we have two amplifiers each, you know. We're a three piece band, but we have a lot of gear, and uh, it, uh, it it just can be tricky sometimes to record, you know, super heavy bands and uh, make them be able to sound super heavy. You know, it's one thing to uh, play it live, and it's another thing to record it. You know, has Satanic Royalty Records been something you've been wanting to do for a while now? How long has this been processing through your head to do this? Uh, man, it was something that was uh, definitely on my mind for a, a long time. I mean, 
So, for, you know, I've been a musician for almost 25 years and growing up in Alaska, it was very DIY. So we had to kind of do everything ourselves. Moving to the States, I moved to Seattle 17 years ago and uh, I had been, kept going, you know, I loved booking house shows, doing all that. So I was just like, I'd always been in bands, you know, I had four bands over the last 17 years here that have done a lot, you know, toured, played, put out a lot of records, uh, just always being part of the scene. Uh, and I'm super community based. Like it's something that I really, really love. You know, I definitely am the type who goes through a show alone and just hangs out with everybody. <laughs> uh, cause that's just a, you know, the type of person I am bring a pocket full of doobies and just fucking hang out, you know? <laughs> And, uh, so, uh, I, we had a lot of trouble with death cave, you know, it was the first time, you know, I was so happy, but it on my own records and booking my own tours and doing all that my whole life. I was, I was so passionate about the music. I didn't want to lose that passion or whatever, get bitter because of some record label or some contract or something. So it was always just something I was wanting to do myself, you know, until, death cave you know and with death cave i was like this is this is it you know what i mean it's like everything's been like practice <laughs> up until this point you know this is the band i want to like try to do the most with because i love it and it feels right and so you know i was trying to shop it out a lot and had a couple leads and stuff but then quarantine happened you know who's going to invest money in a, a band when <laughs> no one knows what the hell the music industry is happening you know what i mean so it was like Crap. So I had a, a logo and a, a name for this satanic royalty from a uh, final DJ night I, I used to do uh, a while ago and uh, a metal final DJ night, obviously. But uh, I had the logo and stuff. So when I put out the our cassette, I used that as like kind of like just something to be like, hey, like we have this, which is put out by satanic royalty records as we shop uh, around our full lengths. And then you know, again, quarantine happens. So it's just like, fuck it. Like, let's keep going. Like, I don't want to wait. I don't want to sit around. I'm going to do it again under satanic royalty and then just see what happens or whatever. Then quarantine happens and then Sandwriter hits me up and they're an amazing band. You know, they were a Kimbo before, or two of the members were in a Kimbo before. They uh, very seasoned musicians, done a lot. And, they have three albums out that are all amazing, you know? And so it was just like when they hit me up being like, you know, do you know anyone, a record label or anything trying to like put out music? I was like, no, nah, man, I just looked for the same thing. And then Eris, who we used to practice with, uh, same thing, hit me up, kind of asking something because they have a brand new album out. And then Old Iron, who's also an amazing band, uh, hit me up and I was just like, you know, I was like, please stand by. You know, I'm going to see if I can do this now. You know, I've got the time because of lockdown and everything. I'm just like, uh, I've I've been a hard worker and I've ever been kind of public publicly for a really long time. And so I feel like uh, I'm just going to put it out there and, you know, reach out and try to see if I can find investors. And, you know, like eight months or so of hard work learning business. You know, I'm not really like a college learned human being you know uh, rock and roll was my school and uh i you know but luckily i know a million people just from being around and being a friendly dude and working in bars and stuff you know forever so it's like it was not that hard to find people who were willing to invest because if i wanted to do this i wanted to be able to do it with like uh, you know global uh uh, distribution and I want to be able to put out more than just you know a couple bands you know I've, I've got releases right now to July of 2022 uh, and the works in production are planned to be recorded so it's you know it's like one of those things that I needed enough money to do you know it's like I'm a hard worker but I don't have that kind of spare cash right uh, so yeah I was able to do it able to put it together reached out to every single person I know in the music industry and, and asked for help. And it was really cool. I was able to get a lot of information and we launched in April and, and this is where we're at. I've got, I've got the site up and I've got a lot of things on there. I'm uh, offering to local bands here in Seattle that I like that are heavy, that 
don't have a record label, you know, that just because I can't put them out, uh, I put up the records up on my web store. So it's easier to more readily available and stuff, you know, when people order stuff. I got like uh, all my bands that have old band. It's like uh, Sandwriter out of Akimbo Records on my web store and stuff. And, you know, just giving all that money to the fans. Just is starting off as a, on a good terms, you know, with everybody because, you know, I'm not doing this to make a bunch of money. I'm doing this because I absolutely love the Seattle heavy music scene, you know, and it's like, it's always been a bummer that, you know, the bigger bands we've had have always been on labels that aren't from Seattle. <laughs> you oh, know, it's yeah. like, uh, you know, it's like Bell Witch or whoever else, you know, Humsley, Lee, like all those bands are amazing, but they just like got represented by someone else. And there's been many bands throughout the years who should have been represented and have made amazing music, but just kind of fizzled away, you know? So it's, I just want to fill that void, you know? <laughs> How important is it for you to help supply a louder voice to heavy music and artists within the Seattle underground as well as transgender and indigenous communities and would you expand the label if needed to um well the the label is definitely a starting point to like uh something that i want to do forever you know what i mean it's like this is you know i want to do you know festivals i want to do podcasts you know what i mean just everything to do with the music scene that is just so important and uh and the whole thing is I wanted to represent Seattle. So I wanted it to be like a Seattle thing, but uh, I also love helping people that have been not had, you know, the loudest voice or representation. And that's why I wanted to help represent, you know, bands that are really heavy as hell and have trans members or indigenous members. Cause me as an indigenous person, I, uh, I know and I've seen, you know, how hard it is, especially for a lot of the bands and reservations and stuff where it's impossible for them to work because it's just like everything is so far away and for them to like save up money with no jobs is kind of hard to be able to make that a reality, you know? Uh, so I just want to be able to help out as much as I can. And, you know, like, again, part of this is just helping out what I believe in and what I care about. And so that is something I care about. And that's why it's on my exceptions list. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Death Caves. Debut album that's out right now entitled Smoking Mountain. Also, they're coming up with an EP later on this year. And you also want to get out and support Fried Burger and Satanic Royalty Records. So, Fried Burger, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? All this new stuff, plus if a band wants to possibly get on your record label or get some help, how can they do that, friend? All right. Well, everything is available on SatanicRoyaltyRecords.com. S-A-T-A-N-I-K RoyaltyRecords.com. And uh, on there, I have a contact form. Bands can reach me through there. It's pretty easy to get in touch with me. Um, also, we have social media. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, reach out through any of those. You know, I try to find all the requests when they come through, but uh, prefer email. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get a hold of us, you can find it there. If you want to support the label we got a lot of merchandise on there for the label as well as uh band stuff you know you can find it there um all the band bios have all of their links on there as well if you just want to go to their band camp or anything like that uh it's all really packed together nice and neat to make it really uh, easy and i think that covers it all before i let you go would you care to do a promo for my show a promo for your show oh yeah, Hell yeah. <laughs> This is Freiberger with Death Cave and Satanic Royalty Records, and you are listening to Boss Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and all all the links that we're associated with, and you definitely want to subscribe to our YouTube page because we are giving away some stuff here pretty soon, honestly. Some awesome, awesome good stuff. Check out uh, Death Cave, also Satanic Royalty Records. 
Hit the fried burger up with your questions if you want to possibly get on the record label. But please give this band a chance and check them out. So, fried burger man, I wish you nothing but the best of luck, and you're welcome on here anytime you need be. Thank you so much. I can't wait to talk to you again in the future, bud. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.